The northern borders of Cosmodan are a damp lowland far different from the snowy peaks of Dunmoreau. These wetlands are an intriguing zone within Warcraft history, from dwarven civil wars to the subjugation of dragons to far more ancient tales from the era of the Titans. The wetlands are often overlooked in the wider world of Azeroth, but what if I told you there is much more to this zone than meets the eye? Today, I wanted to take a closer look at the wetlands to uncover a story that is hidden deep within the lore that you might not have picked up on. Thank you for your fun comments and support, and with all that being said, let's get right into it. Like many of the zones in Classic WoW, the wetlands are an ecosystem, a unique combination of creatures, habitats, and external influences that all play a part in how the player experiences this region. Elementals on Azeroth are living manifestations, protectors of these ecosystems, and are most often seen during times of disturbance. In the heart of the wetlands, players can come across Rethiel the Green Warden, a nature elemental who embodies the essence of the marshes, and who is responsible for their preservation. This is basically the tree beard of the wetlands, and you have the chance to complete a short quest line for him that involves you restoring the balance of nature. According to the Warden, the Mosshide Knolls have been disrupting the ecosystem of the marshes, and tasks you with thinning their numbers. You also collect and destroy the crude flint items held by the Knolls, used to burn the brush and trees that sustain many creatures. After a few visits to the Knoll camps in the area, this is the last time you are in conflict with them, but the Green Warden's tasks are not yet complete. The follow-up hints a little further at this sickness, this unrest that's been brewing in the wetlands. I do not know why, but a festering grows within the wetlands. Fen creepers have risen. They are diseased, fevered blisters on the land. And for the fever to break, they must be dispatched and allowed to settle back into the marshes. This is the most direct reference to some sort of illness spreading in this zone, and even though this is the last quest in the chain, I think this threat is far from over. Eliminating the Fen Creeper elementals, and dealing with the gnolls for that matter, is a treatment for the symptoms of the problem, not the problem itself. The creepers that rose up from the marshland have been defeated, but we still don't know what or who is causing them to surface. It seems the source of this sickness is tied deeply to the land itself, and we need to consider a broader view of this zone and what could be affecting it from within. In the foothills on the southern slopes of the wetlands, evidence has been recovered that may bring an answer to light. At Welgar's excavation site, a group of dwarven archaeologists have been unearthing an ancient set of ruins from primordial Azeroth, the time of the godlike titans and their servants. With the help of players, Prospector Welgar collects fragments of a historical tablet known as the Goaz Stone. After helping the Prospector reform the tablet, he makes an ominous discovery. I can make out new words already. Hmm, it says here, Old Gods, chained beneath the land. This is the beginning of something epic. The quest ends here, but we have our first clue. The Old Gods, cosmic horrors of the Warcraft universe, are known for corrupting lands from deep below, manipulating energies and creatures to do their bidding. The Titans defeated and chained the Old Gods beneath the Earth untold years ago, though during the time of Classic WoW, it becomes apparent these shackles have been neglected over millennia, and we see signs of their presence in other zones. While it is pretty unlikely there is a stirring Old God directly below the wetlands, Let's not toss out the idea of these villains at least influencing the sickness here. A second clue can be found in a separate but parallel quest line that begins in Darkshore but ends in the wetlands. Believe it or not, the Goaz stone is not the only artifact found in the excavation site. Finding the similar looking stone of Relu in the ruins and acquiring two fossils from the same time in history unlocks a very unique interaction. At the Alliance stronghold of Menethil Harbor, archaeologist Flagongut uses the fossils to unlock the power of the stone, calling forth Amon, a vision of an ancient watcher. Ah, I see you toil with relics of the past. Be warned that even your creators are fallible. Digging too deep into your past might bring an abrupt end to your future. Once again, another questline comes to a close, but not before giving us this important piece of history. 
It seems that the Titans and their followers, the Keepers, placed some sort of significance related to the old gods in the area that is now the wetlands, but it's hard to say for certain. Right now, you might still be a little skeptical, a little unconvinced, but there is more lore to be considered. The Elec in the room is Grim Batol, a forgotten bastion of dwarven history that has a complicated past, to say the least. Many players in Classic WoW have never seen the overgrown gates of Grim Batol, and for good reason. Red dragons guard the gates leading up to the fortress, keeping away all but the most well-prepared adventurers. Grim Batol is a hub of conflict and strife over the past few centuries, starting with the War of the Three Hammers. 250 years ago, the Wild Hammer Dwarves chose exile rather than to remain in Ironforge, and founded a new kingdom, Grim Batol, high above the marshes of the wetlands. The Dark Iron Clan was dissatisfied with the previous civil war, and launched an attack on both Grim Batol and Ironforge a few years later. Though Ironforge repelled the invasion, fighting in the wetlands spread inside the city itself, causing chaos for the Wild Hammers. The Sorcerer Empress of the Dark Irons, Modgud, wielded foul magic during the conflict, spreading curses inside the fortress and even making the shadows come to life. Though the Wild Hammers were eventually victorious and drove the Dark Irons out, the city remained tainted by evil, and the dwarves were forced to relocate once again to the Hinterlands, where they remain to this day in the time of Classic WoW. Grim Batol was later overrun by orcs during the Second War, who used the mountain as a base for enslaving red dragons, including the Dragon Queen Alexstrasza. Though the orcs were later decimated in the epilogue of the Second War, the red dragons recognized the evil within and sealed off the entrance. This is why we see dragons patrolling outside the city. It wouldn't make sense for them to stick around without a purpose. This is supported in the RPG book lore, which states, The dragons guard a secret power that living creatures are not meant to know. The story up to this point is already indicative of a dark power lingering in the city, but in Cataclysm, this Grim Batol storyline was blown wide open. Before we get to that though, I want to introduce you all to a fellow WoW YouTuber of mine, all things nerd. He's been making great WoW exploration videos lately, and I want to highly recommend his channel to you all. He's going to release a Grim Batol Out of Bounds exploration soon, so make sure you go give him a sub and check out his other adventures too. With the Cataclysm, Grim Batol was added as a five-person dungeon, the abandoned city being overrun by the Twilight's Hammer Cult and other servants of Deathwing. Players discover that a clutch of red dragon eggs are held here, providing, in retrospect, a second reason for why the dragons would want to safeguard the city. Most of the enemies here are the result of the invasion, corrupting the city even more, but I wanted to focus on one little detail that ties back to the original curse placed on it. In the Cataclysm concept art and the Knight of the Dragon novel, there are references to creatures known as Skarden, mutated dark iron dwarves who survived the assault on the city by retreating to the lower levels where the darkness consumed them. In-game, we never see Skarden, but there are stone trog enemies that may have been placeholders for them. These enemies even have a spell named Modgood's Malady, indicating to me that the trogs may really be cursed dwarves dwelling in the depths of Grim Batol. Over centuries, it's possible these Skarden and the dark powers they inherited have allied with even more sinister forces like the old gods, and the evil players face in this dungeon may just be the tip of the iceberg compared to what's been hinted at through the classic storylines. Also, it's important to note that Modgood's curse is based in shadow or void magic, so this initial act could have established a link to the old gods that has been festering deep within the mountain ever since. If you're wanting even more potential evidence of the old gods puppeteering the enemies you face in the wetlands, let's take a look at a few final perspectives. The residents of Menethil Harbor can provide us with some insight. Carl Boren, a member of the Merchant Marines, has a contract for players to deal with another enemy that has emerged rather recently. Marlocks are crawling out from the deep waters and building their villages on the coastline. They are harassing our fishers and merchants and must be stopped. While this murloc infestation isn't necessarily due to the strange sickness, 
it is another more recent example of a changing environment. There are a few more instances where we can see something like this happening, including at Ironbeard's tomb in the northern part of the zone. The dwarf Saida was attacked while visiting the tomb by monstrous oozes, leaving her bag behind. A quest to retrieve this bag is well known by classic WoW players because of the critically low drop rate, but it's important today because of the story behind it. Saida used to make regular trips here, but only on her most recent journey were the oozes infesting the crypt. This tells us that the oozes have only been here for a short period of time. Likewise, back at the excavation site, the native raptors of the wetlands were inexplicably drawn to the ruins once the dwarves began digging, giving us yet another example of the native creatures lashing out in strange ways. By themselves, any of these events wouldn't be that big of a deal, but when we put them together, we can see a pattern of disruption and decay that the player only partially deals with in Classic WoW. The root cause? Still unsolved. But after considering all these little pieces of evidence, I think the leading theory is that the dark mountain of Grim Batol is somehow responsible. The centuries of lingering shadow, combined with external factors like dwarven excavations and an increase in old god anomalies across the world, have certainly left a mark on the wetlands. With new Season of Discovery content always on the horizon, Grim Batol and the forgotten bits of lore I've pieced together here could make a dramatic reappearance one day. But until then, the shadowy epicenter of this sickness is yet to be unearthed. Thank you all so much for watching, and until next time, may the Force be with you.